room, and so he comes back as a as an eagle, uh, for example, right? You know, he decides to come back as an eagle, uh, and so on. Um, and how that works out, you know, does that work out? Does that mean that your character is the same no matter which creature you come back as? Interesting question, not really answered. A lot of this is just very, very uh, complex uh, and not very explanatory, actually. Um, but the um, beginning of the Republic, the res publica, the politeia, uh, starts off with them trying to think and answer the question, what is justice? What is justice? And justice can be uh, all kinds of things. It's used in lots of different uh, you know, ways of talking. And so what typically happens uh, in these dialogues is Socrates will ask different people. And I remember when I was in class years ago, uh, there were so many different ways we actually learned some chants how to remember them. And the first chant was IS, which stood for the interest of the stronger. And Thrasymachus, or Thrasymachus, or however you want to say that name, um, uh, argues that it's the interest of the stronger. You know, what justice is, is dependent on the leadership. The leadership tells you what this is what justice is. And you have to put up with it because they're the, they're the power that be, right? And they basically, um, choose what justice is based on their preferences, right? Now, I think it's wrong to interpret Thrasymachus as saying that that, that means, you know, I just get everything, kind of uh, like Achilles, right? You know, a critique of Achilles. Uh, but instead, uh, he has a particular moral point of view that he imposes on everyone else, right? And so the interest of the stronger is this moral point of view. Kind of, kind of an interesting comparison um, was at the end of World War II, uh, we set up a, a court system in Nuremberg. Was, wasn't it Nuremberg? Yeah, the Nuremberg trials, right? Uh, and we put all the Nazis on trial uh, because uh, we found their behavior during World War II absolutely horrible, uh, especially with regard to the Holocaust uh, and the way people treated one another and so on um, and so we put them on trial and they defended themselves they said well I I had to follow orders you know they told me to kill those civilians you know if I didn't kill those civilians they would have killed me right so they were actually following a particular moral point of view right um, and that moral point of view you might call stoicism actually, you know, kind of Roman point of view. The Stoics uh, believed that you know, the main thing was the state, and so the highest value that everybody had to follow was what was best for the state. And if killing civilians of the enemy uh, was what the state wanted you to do, that was your highest moral principle, was to do that. And in a sense, the, the Nazis were really Stoics, and they were uh, following their orders and following their orders, whether or not they personally agreed with them or not, was essentially the highest uh, moral value of that particular uh, uh, point of view, right? Um, and yes, if, if you didn't follow orders, they, they would kill you, right? You know, so, so if you're, you're trying to be a good Nazi, you do what you're told, right? Um, and that was their defense in the Nuremberg trial. And we found them all guilty for saying that because we imposed our moral point of view, which says, under those kinds of circumstances, you ought to refuse to carry out an illegal order, right? You know, so, so we have a moral point of view that says that moral point of view is wrong. So the interest of the stronger, we won the war, basically, was we impose our moral point of view on them and killed them for doing that, you know, you know so hung them. Uh, and, and so on, right? You know, so we, we impose our moral point of view. Uh, so that's kind of the, the way I interpret Thrasymachus' argument, the interest of the stronger. Well, Socrates kind of destroys this 
uh, with a Ring of Gyges uh, story. So the Ring of Gyges is a myth, uh, but this, you'll probably familiar, be familiar with this one, but uh, this uh, individual finds a ring and he discovers when he puts it on, it makes him invisible. Um, how many rings of power do we know about that do that, right? You know, this, uh, this is really ancient stuff, finding a ring that makes you invisible. Uh, and he uses this ring then to take over the government and, and kill uh, the people that are in his way, uh, and then he, he, he wants to rule things. Well, the problem, of course, turns out to be that the government turns out to collapse. It, it's, to it's totally terrible when one individual just totally takes over the government without everybody else's uh, input and, and you know, an agreement from others and so on. You might even think of this as kind of an early uh, version of a social contract, you know, the idea that it's important for the community uh, to be all involved in, in what decisions are being made and so on. So everyone then agrees, yes, this whole idea of the interest of the stronger doesn't really work. It's, it's problematic, right? So they move on to the next one, and the, the next one is tell the truth and pay your debts, which I remember Dr. Claghorn going, TTPD, you know, <laughs> you know, so that's, I can still remember that, TTPD, it works, you know, when you memorize stuff that way. <laughs> tell the truth and pay your debts, and that sounds pretty good, you know, everybody has to tell the truth and pay your debts, that's an important part of justice, um, but they come up with the problem of the white lie. And my favorite version of this is, you know, you go to the bar with a friend and the friend says, here, I'm going to drink, so here's my keys. Don't give them back to me if I'm drunk, right? And of course he goes and he gets drunk and then he comes back to you and says, give me my keys, you know? And you're like, oh, I gave them to your wife and she took the truck home. You know, in other words, you're trying to protect your friend from going out there and drunk driving, you know, so you lie because you didn't do that, you know, you're just, you know, whatever lie works in order to keep him from, you know, proceeding uh, with what he obviously wants to do is go out there and kill himself, basically. Uh, so you lie to him. Is that okay? Is that okay to lie under those circumstances? Yeah, every, all thumbs up from everyone. No, that's 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 the good lie. That's the white lie. You know, that you tell it. You know, you're you're lying, but at the same time, it's for good reasons, etc. And so, they have that same experience too, and they agree that telling the truth and paying your debts isn't really the best definition of justice. Uh, so they go on to gay ho, which is G E H O, give. To each his own. Give to each his own. And they come to conclude, yes, that's the best form of justice. Give it, give to each his own. Well, what does that mean, though? Well, this is where then they explore psychology. And what they discover is there are different character types. You know, people are born and they have different kinds of characteristics. And they start describing them using a um, what is this? I don't remember what this link is. Plato's Psychology. Okay, uh, so you so you get a lot of Plato's Psychology in this. So so the link. Notice that link was on my notes. For today, uh, but what I want is um, and I want. I guess is it a pyramid or a triangle? Let's try triangle and see. Aha. This one looks more like uh, somebody else's. I, I want, uh, darn it. All right, let's use this. All 
I wanted that to be big. There we go. Okay. So, I mean, you could get lots of versions of this, obviously. Did you have a question? No, I'm just scratching my head, sorry. Oh, you're allowed to scratch your head. That's it. I scratch my head, too. There's other places you're not allowed to scratch. Oh, sorry, I shouldn't have mentioned that. Notice I scratched my head. Um, I wonder if when you scratch your head, though, if you're scratching the spot that's helping the neuron, the, the, the microtubules, you know, that are helping me to collapse. You know. um, so reason, passion, desire. These are the three. There's some places where he talks about five types, because you've got some evil people, too. But, but the basic uh, psychology, he says, there's three types. We're born kind of with a basic desire uh, for things, and that's you know, food, uh, stuff. Uh, uh, but the kinds of people that basically end up living uh, a whole life dedicated to having stuff, certain kinds of stuff, as their reward for their life are uh, the workers, he calls them, right? They're the ones that make stuff, and they're the ones that appreciate stuff that's, that's their reward. They like stuff, uh, food and the physical pleasures. And it's, it's kind of interesting. He describes those kinds of pleasures as associated with the lower parts of the body, even. Uh, but the virtue of that social class is temperance. Temperance. So that social class needs to have a sense of how much is right for me. Uh, you know, how much pizza should I eat as opposed to you know, eating too much pizza, not enough pizza? Uh, should I hog all the pizza and not share with other people? No, you know, that's probably you know, wrong depending on the... I, of course, if you go to one of our student events and somebody ordered 20 pizzas and there's four people there, now, you know, you're really kind of obligated to take two or three of those whole pizzas home with you, you know, and try to figure out what to do with them when you get them home, you know. Uh, that happens, by the way. If you see a, a student event and they're having pizza, go, because you might, you might be one of the few people there and they might have ordered 20 pizzas. So if you're in the pizza, and it's usually for Moose's Tooth. Anybody heard of Moose's Tooth? <laughs> I hate Moose's Tooth. It's, they put the weirdest things on pizza. I like real pizza, you know, the kind that... Uh, no one ever orders that, though, when I'm... Like, and I'm never the That's one that gets Moose's to Tooth order pizza. I'm always like the person that, here's all the pizzas we ordered, and it's like, what is this? Yeah, but don't blame Moose's Tooth for that. That's not their issue. That's true. That's true. It's unfair of me to do that. You're, you're absolutely right. Give each his own, right? That's, a, that's just people seem to go there to buy the weirdest pizzas. And I'm, yeah, don't buy pizza. That's good. The pizza's good. Two big flavors. When when I was a kid and pizza was invented, yes, it was invented. I I mean, no, well. I remember down the street, I lived in you know, the Philadelphia suburb, and there was a, a place that started making pizza. They were square. Oh my goodness, they were so good. I remember my dad bringing one home on a, like a weekend night, and all of us just loving that pizza. It was a brand new thing. However, shoot, I got lost. What were we talking about? You get in the pizza, and I'm, I'm, I'm gone. Temperance, thank you. Temperance, you need temperance if you're going to be one of the the iron or or um, bronze. You know, they they use metal uh, relationships with these too, and so the the workers are are the ones that do all the jobs, that make all the things. Uh, they're the base of the triangle. Yeah, I mean, there's more of them, and yeah, you, you need these people. 
Uh, but what is their highest virtue temperance? No! Hello? Oh, somebody, I have to talk, I'll, I'll, I'll be back. You can take over. Do the next one. Sorry, it's just that I don't have cancer. So, yay. Yay. 